Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I thought we'd have a look at the aorta under the microscope today. Um, for one, the aorta, largest artery in the body, most important artery in the body, takes blood from the left ventricle, sends it around the body. Partly because we often talk about cardiovascular disease and diseases of the aorta. If the aorta fails, it's catastrophic. But we talk about aortic dissection, we talk about atherosclerosis, we talk about aneurysms, and this can apply to other arteries as well. And we talk about layers in the blood vessel becoming separated and doing various things. If we look at it down the microscope, we will be able to see those layers, those actual layers that you can't see um, with your eye when you're looking at a cadaver. So that's what we'll do. Statistically speaking, atherosclerosis is going to be the thing that kills you. Maybe, maybe not directly, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But when we talk about cardiovascular disease, we're usually talking about atherosclerosis. Look at that, there we go. So this is clearly not a human aorta because it fits onto the microscope slide. And we've got two sections there, one stained in hematoxylin and eosin by the looks of it, and the other one I think has got an elastin stain. Uh, the aorta is a great example of an elastic artery. So we get to talk about physiology too. So the aorta is an elastic artery because as the heart contracts, as the ventricles push blood out into the aorta, in a uh, pulsatile fashion, those forces can be dampened out um, by some of that energy stretching the aorta, and then it it's a uh, you know elastic recoiling back again. So this is pretty straightforward. There we go. We can see the whole wall of the uh, of the aorta on this slide. It's very it's a very pale, very pale stain. Um, and we have three layers. So over to the right here, here we have the lumen. This is where the blood would be. So we have the tunica intima. And the tunica intima is made up of endothelial cells. We'll go for a closer look in a moment. But most of this wall, this is a very thick walled artery. Most of this is uh, smooth muscle and elastin fibers. Smooth muscle because arteries made up of smooth muscle because it's a great building block, but also you can contract and change the diameter of your artery to change, to affect where blood goes around the body and the elastic between them. I should say it makes it an elastic artery, gives it, gives it a bit of stretch and recoil. And then out here on the outermost edge, we have the tunica adventitia. So tunica intima up against the blood, tunica media, uh, smooth muscle, connective tissue, elastin, tunica adventitia around the outside and we'll go in closer to look at the tunica adventitia and if we're lucky we will see nerves and blood vessels the vasa vasorum this is an artery so big it has other arteries supplying blood to its wall to cope with this thickness here okay so i'm at my low power there let's jump up to 10 times objective and this is uh 40 times to my eyes so 10 times objective, 10 times magnification to my eyes, giving me a total of 100 times magnification. Brain and eyes and words not always in alignment. So now we can see the endothelial layer, very, very thin, the very, very thick muscle and elastic layer, and then the outer connective tissue layer holding that all together. The tunica intima, tunica media and tunica adventitia and in terms of our disease processes we are very interested in the tunica intima the intimate tunic the coat closest to the blood i guess um, so all blood vessels are lined by endothelium uh, and the endothelium is maybe a bit more special than you think and certainly i know that uh, biotechnologists who are trying to make blood vessels, you know, man-made blood vessels and heart pumps and that sort of thing, um, it's quite difficult to replicate. Um, the key thing here is that you've got blood running through you. 
If you cut yourself, that blood forms clots to stop the blood coming out of you. You don't want those clots to form while it's running around inside the body. So that's a big role of the endothelium actually, is, is a nice smooth flow and not having any clots forming. So that very, very thin, almost, you know, unimportant layer of cells there, an unimportant looking layer of cells there, that's the endothelium. So a flat, simple, simple as in a single layer of, of cells there. And though those uh, endothelial cells are supported by a basement membrane, so there's collagen, and in this artery there will be elastin in there as well because that's elastic, and that is the tunica intima. That's all there is to it. Uh, so as we go more deeply, as we go more deeply, <laughs> Uh, we can see it's very wavy. So here we've got lots and lots of smooth muscle cells. Now, can you see they're in, they're in layers, they're in distinct layers. They're not all interwoven, running in different directions. They are in circular layers going around the artery because that's how they would change the diameter of the artery, right? So they are in layers, which is an important concept I mentioned at the beginning. We see lots of cells, lots of nuclei in there, lots of cells. So we've got uh, smooth muscle cells, and we've also got um, cells in there looking after the collagen and the uh, elastin and other extra, extra cellular matrix bits and bobs that are holding all that together. But let me just go to the right again. And look, so as I go through here, just look at all these layers, 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 layers. So, the human aorta is even thicker than this. It's much thicker than this, but it's this aorta itself is already big. And as we get to the outer edge, now we're losing that smooth muscle. The staining is lost. Uh, we're seeing more connective tissue, so more collagen. And now we're in the tunica adventitia. And look, that's it. there's the, the outermost edge there to the left. And look what we're looking at. We, we can see there, we can see blood vessels. So these are the small blood vessels. There are little arterioles and venules in here, and lymphatics, which are supplying blood to the aorta. Sounds mad. The cells on the inside get their oxygen and nutrition from the blood running through the aorta, but the aorta is so thick that it's also supplied with its own blood vessels, the vasa vasorum on the outside there. And if we look really carefully, we would see some nerves show. If you spot them, oh look, it's coming apart a bit there. Um, but, hey, You've been watching all my histology videos, right? You'd know, <laughs> you'd know a nerve bundle if you saw it. There's not a great deal of staining here. Anyway, so that that's it though. That's the that is the microscopic anatomy of the uh, of the aorta. Hey, let's just go up to the highest power for funsies, and then we can talk about uh, disease processes. Whoop. Um, a bit more light, maybe, maybe. Okay, so there we go. Tunica adventitia, uh, vasovisor, blood vessels in the outer wall, and then look, these are those layers of smooth muscle and connected tissue. So the tunica media, bom, 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 bom. And then as we get close to the surface, there we get the tunica adventitia, and we start to see the endothelium. Of course, we have another section on this slide, don't we? Um, but there, tunica. Uh, the endothelial cells there. Look, you can see how the endothelial cells are different, just about hopefully to the to the other cells there. But we do have another section, don't we? Um, let's go out to that's the ten times objective lens. So that's what we've been looking at. Now let me slide across to. Is it this way? Nope. <laughs> Let me slide across the short way to this. So this is the same tissue, the same artery, the same aorta, but it's stained with a stain for elastin. So now all of that, all of that, those are elastic fibers. That's all elastin. This is what we mean by an elastic artery. It is full of elastin. So it is very stretchy and very strong because those forces, those pressures generated by the left ventricle as it sends blood out, they're high. So this has got to cope with all that stretch and recoil, dampen that pulsatile flow, those peak pressures into the sort of pulsatile flows you, you feel in the artery, at your wrist and other arteries around the body. Um, but look, so the layers here are very, very clear. 
and it's the layers I wanted to show you. Oh, we can see a little bit more detail there, so we can see how maybe at the basement membrane there's a little bit more fine detail there if we've got the uh, the connective tissue supporting the endothelial cells and then as we go in we've got much much thicker bands of elastin. Of course it's wiggly here because it's um, it's not stretched, it, it's relaxed, right? But pretty cool. Right, diseases then. Um, okay, so first of all, um, atherosclerosis. Um, oh, too bright. Atherosclerosis. So you need fat to live. Your, the cells of your body, various things need fat. And they, there are many hormones that need fat in their production and so on. But when you eat fat, when you move fat around your body, those lipids are transferred around the body attached to other proteins, such as low-density lipoproteins, high-density lipoproteins. You've got molecules moving lipids around the body. Um, low-density lipoproteins, um, over a long period of time, we're talking decades of too much LDL, too many low-density lipoproteins, we'll see those low-density lipoproteins moving deep to the endothelium here and into the tunica intima. This triggers a bit of an inflammatory response from the immune system. Monocytes move in. Those monocytes become macrophages. Those macrophages become foam cells. And you start to get an accumulation of foam cells and lipids in here. So you start to get an atherosclerotic plaque forming in the tunica intima, deep to the endothelial cells. So this lovely layered structure that we're seeing here gets disrupted. You start to see a, a mass of foam cells and lipid. The smooth muscle cells nearby will, will often invade this. They'll start to form a, a fibrin surround to that. The cells in the middle will become necrotic and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This is, like I say, this is a very slow process that can take decades and decades to develop. It's easy to avoid with diet and exercise, as in a good diet, not just not eating too many bad things. We all know what a good diet is. Um, so as this grows over time, three things can happen. Uh, number one, as the, uh, as the plaque grows in the wall there, it can push into the lumen. Uh, so your lumen gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so you, your artery can become narrower, so that can impede blood flow. Imagine if this happens in the heart, imagine if, if this happens in a, an artery supplying blood to the brain, or the kidneys, or a region of the gastrointestinal, any, any part, all parts of your body need blood, right? Um, or the, uh, the plaque might push outwards so that it, it, the, the artery bulges out instead of bulging inwards, which can make you more predisposed to forming an aneurysm. So we see an artery and it's got a little bubble on it, a weakness in the wall caused by this shape change here. An aneurysm means that the artery might fail under pressure and then the blood will leak from the artery into the body tissues. You're bleeding internally, which would be bad. I don't know if this is most commonly, but I guess this is um, the most common cause of killing people from atherosclerosis is that the endothelium there, because the plaque is underneath it, deep to it, the endothelium is broken, ruptures. The blood starts to form clots now because it sees the plaque and other things. Clots start to form when this atherosclerotic plaque kind of ruptures and the endothelium is damaged. So now clots are forming inside the circuitry system. Those clots will probably leave, they might block this blood vessel, so this can happen in any artery in the body. So it might happen right there, but that clot, that thrombus, might leave this point and then flow with the blood until it meets a narrowing, until it meets a, a you know, an artery that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and then it gets blocked. So this is what commonly causes a stroke to the brain. This is what commonly causes a heart attack when the coronary artery gets occluded. This can occlude an artery, say you go into the kidneys, which can cause kidney disease or the gastrointestinal tract, which would, and you know. So um, this is what atherosclerosis is. It's a slowly developing um, pathology 
in the wall of an artery or multiple arteries as a result of lots of LDL, low density lipoprotein, uh, in the blood for long periods of time. Uh, monocytes, macrophages, foam cells form a plaque with that lipid. That plaque grows over time and can either narrow the blood vessel, burst the blood vessel, or cause clots to form at that blood vessel which block other blood vessels. That is common. Um, aortic dissection is um, less common, but hugely dangerous. So in, um, in aortic dissection, the endothelium has been damaged, maybe by um, atherosclerosis, maybe by some other process. And uh, as the endothelium is damaged, blood under high pressure can move into these layers that we see here. Maybe it's the layer between the tunica intima and the tunica media. Maybe it's between layers of the tunica media. But blood is then forced into, because this is a high pressure vessel, blood is then forced into that layer and those layers separate. That's an aortic dissection. So you kind of, you've got your normal lumen and then you've got a false lumen as blood is being forced into this layer and creating it. The blood doesn't really go anywhere, it's just forced into this blind ending thing it's created, right? Now that aortic dissection can track either away from the heart or towards the heart, as in those layers keep getting pushed apart and pushed apart. So it can get worse and worse and worse over time. Um, this means that for one, that aortic dissection can narrow the lumen of the aorta. Uh, for two, if it tracks back towards the heart, it can then affect the coronary arteries, which are the first branches of the aorta. If it tracks away from the heart, it can affect other branches. Imagine how if you've got a tube with these layers, how another tube, another artery branching from it, how those layers become that shape. So as the aortic dissection tracks along between those layers, it can then move into a branch of the aorta and completely occlude it, which could cause ischemia of the small bowel, which would be very painful and you can't live without your small bowel. It could occlude the blood vessels going to the head and neck or to the upper limbs, or like I say, if it tracks back to the coronary arteries. But do you see how it's these layers here? Uh, it's very much these layers that we're talking about when we're talking about aortic dissection, when we're talking about atherosclerosis. Um, it's these layers that get separated here, which is why it's good to look at this under the microscope, right? Um, those are your key terms. The aorta is a big elastic artery. Uh, the, it's lined internally by endothelium. The endothelium is against the blood. Uh, the endothelium and its basement membrane make the tunica intima. And then you have all these layers of smooth muscle and elastin and connective tissue. That's the tunica media. And then on the outside of the, of the artery, away from the blood, up against the other tissues of the body, we have the tunica adventitia. And in there, the other interesting thing you find are the vasa vasorum. But hopefully what I really want is that looking at those layers makes it easier for you to understand the pathophysiology of aortic dissection and atherosclerosis. Hey, and if, that, if that's what happened, then my work here is done. Um, I hope that was interesting. I hope it was useful. I'll see you next week.